If you're an event planner or you're thinking of entering the event planning space, watch this video because I am going to share with you this amazing segment within the event industry that is going to be worth over a trillion dollars by 2026. A trillion dollars. So keep watching and I'll share with you more. Hey, if we've just met, my name is Felix, and in this video, I'm going to share with you uh, more details about three different types of corporate events. Specifically, I will be covering about team building, family days, and gala dinners. In summary, team building events are created for staff and employees to reward and celebrate achievements, to build camaraderie, um, to build bonding and cohesion among staff. So whether the company is experiencing huge growth and hiring new people to join their teams, or they are experiencing, unfortunately, a retrenchment or they're letting people go, it is very, very important uh, for every single organization in the world to hold team building events. And the second type of events that I'm going to cover is family days. Family days are events where staff and their family members are invited by a company to get together, to come together, um, to build a bond, to introduce the family members to the company itself um, so that the family knows uh, what the staff is actually going through and who their friends and colleagues are. It brings them closer, it keeps their staff and their employees closer and more loyal to the company. And finally, the third type of corporate event that I'm going to introduce to you today is uh, a gala dinner or a dinner and dance as we call it in Singapore. A gala dinner and a dinner and dance is also a celebratory um, event, typically held in a very nice hotel, uh, and it's very thematic as well. So in this video, I will be covering these three different types of corporate events. I will show you where the potential is for these type of events if you have uh, no experience running corporate events before. Um, but even if you do, I'm sure you will be getting some ideas or some new thoughts uh, after watching this video. So let's move on to the slides and I'll talk more there. I'll talk about the overview of corporate events industry. Um, I'll give a brief definition of what corporate events are, uh, the main purpose that these are organized for, and also, uh, again, I will touch on the three different types of corporate events in this presentation. The corporate events industry in 2018 was valued at $1.1 trillion. And in 2026, the same industry is forecasted to reach $2.3 trillion. The industry is divided into different types, such as exhibitions and conferences, corporate events and seminars, music concerts and festivals. Uh, but the corporate events industry, which consists of corporate events and seminars, account for the maximum events industry share. Just looking at the chart that I got from AlliedMarketResearch.com, the corporate events and seminars segment accounts for over a trillion dollars worth of business by 2026. By definition, um, a corporate event is mainly an event uh, or a social activity organized by a company. So it is company sponsored. Um, its target audience are typically employees of that company, their stakeholders, customers, and of course, potential clients as well. And the main purpose of um, a company organizing a corporate event is to reward achievements, celebrate milestones, motivate employees, and sometimes when they are experiencing organizational changes, they also like to organize a lot of these corporate events. Um, and specifically, the three different types of corporate events that I will be covering in this video are team building events, family days, and gala dinners, also known as dinner and dance. Team building is the most common and most regularly run corporate event in the world. Um, in these slides, I'll be touching on very, very briefly uh, what these team building activities are and who they are typically organized for, um, such as the target audience as well as the purpose. So, um, typically, uh, team building activities are organized for the employees and teams. So, these could be for existing employees or for new joiners or new employees when they want to onboard these new staff to their company, to their teams, um, they tend to organize team building activities to build more cohesion and build more 
uh, camaraderie between them and the existing employees. Um, so the purpose mainly is for employee engagement, for staff to strengthen bonds, for them to improve their collaboration. Uh, and what's most important is how these programs are being presented. Uh, so most of the times, these are challenge-based situations. Uh, teams are put into situations where they need to solve certain problems and they need to um, compete against other teams. Uh, there are usually two different types of team building programs. Usually, they are done in a very collaborative fashion where everyone comes together, they have one common objective, they complete the objective within the given amount of time, uh, and then they win. Uh, what new team building companies have started doing is to create more challenge-based, more competitive um, programs and activities to encourage participation, to get more people to participate and get them to join and play with more vigor uh, in order to maximize the outcome and the ROI from their investment in a team building uh, program and a team building activity. Uh, so we're going to be touching a lot more on what team building programs are um, and also how to explore and how to research on um, the team building activities that's available around the world in future videos. But for now, we will wrap it up uh, for team building as this is. Family days, my most preferred corporate event to organize for our clients. Family days usually are organized for employees and their families. Sometimes they are also organized for the family members of a company's stakeholders, such as their suppliers or their clients. Um, mainly it is an opportunity for the company to reward their employees and to um, give them an opportunity to spend some quality time to bond with their family members together with the company. Um, a lot of times um, the market is talking about work-life balance nowadays and organizing family days is one way and usually a very very big way for companies to show to their staff that their families matter to them. Usually a family day is presented by way of carnival setups, game booths and activities uh, such as workshops and show times on stage. Um, you would usually engage a very, very experienced MC or host to play stage games, to interact with the guests and to interact with everybody who is there. Um, sometimes there are lucky draw prizes to be given out. There are game prizes to also be given out. Given out. It is a very jovial, it's a very happy and very fun event. Um, to organize and of course uh, for the families and their uh, colleagues to attend. So there's so much more that I would want to share with you about family days and how we can organize things around and create packages and make some money uh, while doing this as a business um, but I will leave that to a future video. For now we'll just move on to talk more about the last corporate event activity that I'm covering in this video, which are, which are uh, gala dinners. So finally, we've gotten to the year-end gala dinner or otherwise known as a dinner and dance party. The gala dinner mainly is organized for employees of a company. Um, sometimes other stakeholders are also invited. So a company would sometimes invite their clients, or sometimes invite the suppliers or their industry partners who have supported them for the entire year. Um, it is a reward dinner. Um, it is to improve bond. It is to show everybody that they are appreciated. Usually a gala dinner or a dinner and dance has a very grand appeal. There are a lot of themes involved. Um, and typically it is in, uh, organized in a hotel ballroom or a very nice um, uh, F&B or very nice dinner location. 
usually gala dinners are restricted to about a thousand to two thousand people for a larger company. Smaller companies have also organized gala dinners in the past, um, but they usually range around the size of 300 to 500 employees in Singapore or in Asia because the sitting is typically in a round table of 10. Um, most organizers quote for company gala dinner and dance based on the number of tables. So every table has 10 people. If a company is inviting 500 to 600 people, we typically say that we're organizing a gala dinner and dance for 50 to 60 tables. Of course, there's a lot more that I want to share with you about organizing a dinner and dance. Um, again, those will be left in future videos. But for now, let's wrap up this video and hopefully you have learned a little bit more about corporate events, the three different types, which are team building, family day, and gala dinners. Um, and hopefully I managed to convince you to see the potential in getting into this business and in learning more about how one can organize and build a business around organizing corporate events. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about the corporate events industry, just sign up below and I'll be happy to send you more information and more tips as I develop them um, as we go along. Uh, there is so much more to learn about this industry and there is so much potential for event organizers like you or would-be event organizers like you uh, to join the corporate events industry. So just put your email in, sign up and I'll see you on the other side.